What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. I just wanted to make a quick video today on New Year's Eve to answer a question that I've been getting in my inbox quite often uh, since I've made my new Zeus server build vlog. So uh, the main question that I've been getting is people are wondering how exactly does parity work in Unraid and compared to something else like a RAID 5 or a ZFS 1 or 2 or RAID 6 or whatever. There seems to be a little bit of confusion because Unraid doesn't use all of the disks at once unless it's doing a parity rebuild. It only really uses the disk that you're reading or writing to, uh, and then the parity disk if you're writing data. So after getting a few messages and just referring people to a website link that you can read up on it, I just wanted to make a quick video to, to break it down as simply as I can. So to do this, I'm gonna keep it very simple, and I'm going to bring us into imagination land with three separate hard drives. Now, as you may or may not know, data is stored as bytes and bits. More specifically, there's eight bits to a byte, and a bit is either a zero or a one. So today I'm gonna focus on those bits. And even more so, I'm going to focus on the very first bit of three separate hard drives. So let's look at it like this. At the beginning of every single hard drive, there's one bit, right? You have three hard drives, and we're looking at the first bit of every single one of those hard drives. If you have all three hard drives pre-cleared and put into a brand new Unraid server, that very first bit, they're all going to be zeros across all drives. And in this setup, of course, you're going to have one of those three drives as the parity disk, and the other two drives are going to be used as data disk. Unraid's parity is determined by how many ones are in those ones and zeros on the first sector of that drive. All right, so we have two data drives and we're looking at the first bit on those data drives. Now those can either be a one or a zero. What Unraid is gonna do is count how many ones are on those data drives. So let's imagine for a second we have those two drives and the first drive has a zero and the second drive has a one. Unraid is gonna count that and make it to where it's an even number of ones. So in this instance, with the two drives, the first bit, one being a zero and the other being a one, it has to add one in order to make that two ones. So the parity drive is gonna store a one. Now, if both of those drives, the first bit just happens to be a zero, the parity drive doesn't have to add anything in order to make the, the number of ones even. So the parity drive is gonna have a zero. And even further, if both of those drives have ones as their very first bit, the parity drive is also going to be a zero because it doesn't have to add anything in order to make it an even number of ones. Now, what does this mean for parity rebuild and data loss? Well, that means that if you were to lose either one of those drives, all it has to do is a simple calculation to determine whether or not that bit should have been a zero or a one, and it does that for the entire drive. So let's imagine that disk number one went down, and it originally had a one as the first bit. Disk number two is still good, and the parity drive is still good. Okay, so disk number two had a zero, and the parity drive had a one. So Unraid is automatically gonna say, well, if parity drive had a one and the second drive had a zero, since there has to be an even number of ones, that means the first drive, that first bit, had to have been a one. Now this can be scaled up quite a bit from one drive to 20 drives if you want to. All it's gonna do is calculate that ones and zeros and find out what the even number of ones are. So now that you understand how the Unraid parity actually works by calculating the number of ones for the bits, here's a couple of the downsides to how this works. First of all, all of your drives do not work all at the same time. All it has to do is calculate when you're writing to a single disk and the parity drive. It's able to calculate what data the parity drive has to have by writing it to the new drive that you're writing your data to without spinning up all the drives. It's basically just kind of simple math. However, with that simple math, it does slow down. I mean, I was looking at Zeus at getting 30 to 35 megabytes per second write speed when I was moving new data to my drive. And these are with like brand new eight terabyte Western digital red drives. The older your drives get, the more data you're dumping, the other things that you're doing with your, your uh, server is all gonna slow this down. And the real downside is that since all of your drives do not work all at the same time, in fact, most of which cannot be used for a very long time if they're the original drives that you copied a bunch of data over that you don't access very often, they do have the chance of failing without you really knowing it. And this is kind of the flaw with Unraid because with other file systems, like for example, RAID 5, RAID 6, ZFS 1 or 2, they use all of the drives to, to span all of the parity. So if any one drive goes down, all of the drives have been working the entire time and you can rebuild that disk. However, you have ample time to find out whether or not those other drives should have failed. Although it's not always guaranteed, but you have ample time to find out if they should have failed, so hopefully they won't fail during parity. But they do fail, and that's why you get things like 
RAID 6 or ZFS 2. That allows you to lose two drives at any given point and still be able to recover your data. With Unraid, a lot of those drives go unused. So if you ever lose a drive and you have to rebuild parity by spinning up all of your drives, reading all of the data from every single one of them at the same time to calculate what that lost drive should have been, that's when the opportunity arises to lose one of those drives that hasn't been used for a long time that might have been having problems without you noticing because you never had to read or write to it because it was already full. And on top of this, Unraid does come with a major speed crunch. I've already mentioned the writing speeds being 33 to 35 megabytes per second, which is absolutely terrible. But the read speeds are also limited by the drive that you're reading from. It's just a single drive read speed. So if you have something like a RAID 5 or ZFS 1 with a fast uh, ethernet connection, something like a 10 gigabit, you can have that as a network attached storage device and you could do video projects or photo editing off of that without any noticeable you know, issues with speed. But with Unraid, you're just limited to the speed of that drive. So it's kind of a downfall. Now Unraid does have cache drives and some other things that I can cover uh, when you're writing data to it, but I've already talked about that before, so I'm not going to cover it again today. Now I know after everything I just said, you might be thinking, well, Jason, why the hell would you go with Unraid versus something like uh, NAS for free or free NAS that uses the ZF file systems? They're, they're so much faster and they're so much safer because you can have two data disks protecting your entire array. And I, and I get that. But the one thing I have to say is that before I upgraded and went to Zeus, I was actually running a JBOD system, which is just a bunch of disks. There's no RAID, there's, there's no fancy setup, just all different drive letters, absolutely zero protection. And I've been doing that for years and I've gotten extremely lucky and I've never lost any data. So moving to this new operating system with this new server, I was able to test every single hard drive with a pre-clear, uh, doing pre-clear for three times, you know, which is basically a stress test and writing all of the zeros to each drive. And I did actually find out that two of my drives were on the way out. I sent those off for warranties and got brand new ones from Western Digital. Those consequently did pass the next pre-clear and I slapped them into the server. But circling back though, since I was running absolutely zero protection and now I have at least some kind of protection, I feel like I still moved in the right direction. And honestly, I have a lot of data that maybe won't be read very often. So I don't wanna stress out a lot of my hard drives that might be archiving old, old footage for weddings or projects that I've worked on in the past. Uh, just because all of the drives have to spin up when you use something like a RAID 5 or a RAID 6 or ZFS 1, ZFS 2, etc. And on top of all that, the added cost. Now, I ended up actually having a lot more hard drives than I needed, but there is an, act, an added cost if you want to run ultimate protection like you know ZFS 6 or RAID 6. Uh, it does cost you two drives per array that you have. So if you do want to separate and have multiple arrays, you know, things to store, uh, you know, the project files you don't want to access that much and things to store uh, media files that you're going to be using for your media server. If you want to break those down, you're going to lose two drives each. Whereas now I have my entire array being protected and I use that very loosely. It's only barely being protected, but it's being protected by one disk. And I can add a second parity drive if I want to, which is basically going to help me if I am doing a parity rebuild and my parity drive fails, which is very possible. Uh, I'm going to add a second one once I can afford one and want to get into that. But for right now, the setup is worlds better than what I had before. I've also had a lot of people ask me which is better, ZFS or the Unraid parity system. And I'll say hands down, it's probably ZFS. Uh, or RAID 5 or 6 for that matter is probably better than Unraid in most cases. In my case, I wanted to get the most amount of hard drive space with at least a basic form of protection and I wasn't terribly worried about speed because you could do things like the cache drive in order to speed things up when you want to write data to it. So it's kind of a use case scenario that really depends on what you're going to be using your server for. As a media server, I don't need the speed of you know five or more disks all working together in order to provide crazy you know network transfer speeds or anything like that. The speed of one hard drive is plenty fast enough for what my media server needs. And the way I look at it is in a parity rebuild, if let's say I lose a data drive and I go to do a parity rebuild and my parity drive fails, that means all the data that I lost is on that single data drive that I lost. I'm not going to lose anything because of the parity drive. I'm just going to lose that one, uh, that one disk worth of data. And the way Unraid works is it stores files individually to those disks, kind of like a, a fill up over, actually there's a few different options, but I won't go into that. So really you're not going to lose an entire array with something like a RAID 5 or RAID 6 might do. With Unraid, you're just gonna lose the data on that one disk, which was basically the same risk I had with my old setup. I mean, at any given, at any given point, I could have lost data on one disk and just been shit out of luck. But at least now I have a chance for protection. And later on down the line, I can add another eight terabyte parity disk that will help uh, keep that from happening in the future. And I can really only hope that I don't lose two data drives at the same time, which would really suck and is totally possible. Uh, because if I do lose two data drives, no matter how many parity disk I have, 
I basically lose all of the data on both of those, those uh, data drives. But these are the risks that I take to get the rewards that I wanted. I got the server to where I get the most amount of my hard drive space available to me. I do have some, some form of basic protection, albeit not perfect, uh, and definitely not the best selection or choice uh, for most use cases. However, for mine, it seems to fit really well. And I guess you can say that I have a lot of faith in Western Digital um, that my history has proven with Western Digital drives, my, per my personal history with my usage to, to make Western Digital's a very reliable drives for me. And I'm just kind of taking that gamble and hoping that nothing happens or I'm not gonna lose any kind of valuable data from it. Um, even though I don't really keep very valuable data on it, I just, it's just one of those things. I accepted the risk. I went with the decision that I went with and that's that. But anyways, guys, it is New Year's Eve. It is about almost beer 30. So I'm gonna go ahead and start hitting that real quick. I just wanna say everyone have a happy new year. Be safe, don't do anything stupid. Uh, don't drink and drive, That's that's that classifies as stupid. So don't do that. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Have a happy new year and a good night.